Come sweeping down the plain And the waving wheat Can sure smell sweet When the wind comes right behind the rain Let me introduce myself. My name is Gary Gress and uh, primarily I work at the University of Oklahoma. I profess and I teach there. Uh, I am part of the Department of Geography and Environmental Sustainability. I am also the OCAGE co coordinator. That's an alliance, the Oklahoma Alliance for Geographic Education. And I am currently uh, the NCGE, a lot of acronyms here, uh, the, uh, the National Council for Geographic Education President. So, welcome. Today what we're going to be doing is basically thinking about things spatially. Things that are around us, everyday things, everyday occurrences, everyday, if you will, uh, happenings. Uh, Basically, I like to call this thing, I, I like the rhyme time kind of stuff, uh, you know, every place has a face. We're going to be looking at the structures of places, if you will. Uh, we're going to be talking about regions. I call that every region has a reason. And then, of course, then we're going to, the big goal is going to be to apply this all to the C3 curriculum uh, or the C3, if you will, uh, framework, which is part of your new, if you will, classroom toolkit. Purpose of this series, the purpose of what we're doing, it really doesn't matter if you teach history or civics, geography, or any, any social studies course. It really doesn't matter because what we're going to be doing in this series is basically introducing you to some new ways to teach your content. So the purpose of this series is to expand, if you will, enhance your geographic thinking about places. Actually, at heart, we're all geographers. Uh, I, th I think at the end of this you're going to realize that. I hope you realize that at the end of this. We're going to be working with critical thinking skills and problem solving in the social sciences. These are the kind of things that really, really make uh, you know, our job a lot easier and it validates actually what we do in our classrooms. And of course, what are we all looking for? We're looking for better lessons. We're looking for having our students engage in our activities. That's really the goal of what we are going to be doing here. And it revolves in this instance around the C3 inquiry strategies. So what does C3 stand for? C3 stands for getting your students ready for college or if they're not going to college, the other C is for a career and the other C meaning to be good citizens or lead good civic lives. That's what C3 really, really stands for, okay? Boy, I tell you, you've seen this picture a million times, maybe in your mind, I don't know. Uh, I know this is really frustrating because every year you walk into the classroom, even I do on the college level sometimes, and I go, uh-oh, uh, basically what's going on here, you know? This year, what are we teaching for heaven's sakes? Uh, and, I, and you say, oh, I don't know, you know, or it's whatever the governor and the lieutenant governor create on a napkin, or maybe the legislature, or maybe your school system, or your district. So at the bottom of this particular cartoon, it says, after four years of teaching, Miss Smith snapped and joined the circus. I hope you know, uh, at least stick with the series before you consider doing that. This is a four-part series. You'll be using a geo packet, and the geo packet basically uh, looks like this. And this particular geo packet will either be online or you'll be able to have it in person, whatever your case is, whatever your scenario is, whatever group you're viewing this with, or yourself, okay? But it'll also be, uh, if you will, online. Uh, you may need some paper, okay? Uh, you might be sketching and writing. I, I hope you're maybe writing and taking down great ideas. And then, of course, get ready for possible discussions if you're in a group situation or if you're with another person. It might be sort of fun to sort of bounce these ideas and uh, some of these activities off of one another, okay? And then always be thinking, don't we do this anyway? Always be thinking about your individual classroom take ideas, whatever idea it is, whenever you feel the urge to be inspired, write it down, write it down, and, 
use it in your classroom. Here's our lineup. In this series, the first vignette, I like the word vignette, by the way, uh, you're going to be all becoming geodetectives. Not that you aren't already, but you're going to be understanding how things change, changing landscapes, changing places. Uh, the second in the series that you're going to be viewing is every region has a reason. These are places that we're going to be looking at, large and small. And uh, by the way, everything is part of a region. Uh, reading landscapes and places, that'll be our third in the series, or third vignette, if you will. That's where we're going to be adding all kinds of tools to our so-called C3 toolbox. And then finally, we'll have some fun. Uh, I'd like to think the whole series is fun, but okay, finally we're gonna have some fun about understanding and applying. Isn't that what this is about? You're gonna take this and you're gonna apply this, uh, all these wonderful new C3 tools to your classroom. So there you go. There is the, uh, let's say there's the lineup, okay? I was gonna say tentative, but this is the lineup. Let's do it. Okay, vignette one. Don't you love that word? Vignette one. So we're going to introduce changing landscapes to you, places and spaces. You are all going to become official geo-detectives, if you will, no matter what courses you teach. And here we go. You're going to ask, okay, places and spaces. Why in the heck are we looking at things like that for starters? Well, it's a good building block. It's a good starting point, okay? Flying over urban areas, maybe in an airplane, you're looking out the window and you say, whoa, why is that there? What, what caused that particular urban area to be there? I don't know, it could be a myriad of reasons, all right? Uh, what's, what's in that area? What makes it tick? Well, maybe, who knows, maybe it's known for bluegrass. Maybe this could be Nashville. It could be your city or whatever urban area you're closest to. Why is it there? Why is it so important? Maybe it's a crossroads of interstates. Maybe it has some sort of resource or things of that nature. And then why is this there, the, that wonderful housing development that sometimes when we fly over places we see? Well, people need places to live. People be, need places to sort of go back and forth to their jobs near that particular urban area. And then, of course, there's places that are not parts of urban areas. There are places that maybe are distant from this place. And the rural areas, basically, you have to ask the same question. Why is, for instance, that church there? Why is that church building looking the way it looks? What kind of materials did they use? And so you're starting to piece together, maybe this is a different culture, maybe this is a different place, much different from that urban area. And of course, there's some fun stuff you can do with your students too. This place is called Cut and Shoot. Uh, it is a post office of all places in Texas. And so maybe part of your asking why is, why is this place called Cut and Shoot? So that's why we look at places and spaces to sort of get us into more and more deeper academic discussions in our classes. Stuff that I'd like us to really remember as we're doing all of this is that all places change. All places have morphology. Uh, it's, it's a process. Uh, I always tell my students, well, you know, the only constant in life is change anyway, so okay, just get used to it. Uh, all places are unique. Where you were born, where you are living now, that is something really unique because it has its own special activities, its own material artifacts, issues, its own particular cultural, uh, if you will, identity, and its own histories. All places use space differently. I mean, every place that you look at, every place where you live, every place that you try to at least study, there's all kinds of patterns that are there that are made by people. And these patterns can be mapped, okay? That's really part of geography, too. All places and spaces are part of what? They're part of larger, yep, you guessed it, landscapes and regions. All right, so, okay, it's your turn. Uh, grab a piece of paper and think about that word. Think about that word landscape, okay? And as you think about that word landscape, what I'd like you to do is sketch the first landscape image that comes to your mind. Okay, I'll give you a few seconds to do that. Just 
You're not a Picasso. Well, you know, maybe you are. But start sketching something that comes to your mind when you hear that word landscape. Okay, I don't know how much time you've had, but uh, we're going to say, whoop, time's up. All right, now, maybe you drew a place, lots of reasons, but maybe you drew a place that you visited. You know, maybe it was something that was familiar to you. Maybe it was a place that created memories for you, involved certain activities. Maybe it had issues associated with it. Maybe not in normally important, or, or maybe some sort of generalized perception. Now, don't you dare change your drawing at this point, okay? Because more than not, your particular drawing is going to be a landscape. Obviously, that was the assignment of some sort. So right now, what is your definition of landscape? Look at that picture that you drew. I'm going to bet that most of you basically uh, when you describe your landscape, are, you know, you're going to describe it as ah, something that is aesthetic, something that is wonderfully relaxing and all-encompassing. Maybe not, maybe not, but when people hear that word landscape, they draw, if you will, things like this, actual landscapes with trees and mountains or streams or hills or things of that nature. It's just, speaking of nature, it's just human nature to do that. So what is a landscape? A landscape is an expanse of natural scenery. This is the actual definition. I googled it. <laughs> that could be seen in a single view, you know, like you standing on a mountaintop and you're looking at everything, you know. But I decided that I, I don't know if I was happy or if I'm saying, way, whoa, horsies, that may not be what geography is really all about. So I decided, all right, all right, I'm going to add the word geographic, I'm going to re-Google this, and I'm going to see what happens. So, let's look at geographic landscape. Let's see what happens, all right? Ooh, is a result which not only of natural forces, but of human modification and the use of land as well. So all those wonderful, beautiful mountains and streams and all of those things that maybe you might have drawn, remember? change. Those things are always being changed and modified. Actually, I snuck in a picture, if you remember, of that one landscape that had the trees and the road basically cut through those trees. Okay, So it, everything's modified by us, uh, for better or for worse, if you will. Okay, That sounds familiar. So it's geotrip time, and of course uh, we're going to go to a place called Oliver's Woods. Hi folks, here we are, uh, Oliver's Woods, and as promised, we're going to be doing a little geo-detective work. Uh, let's, let's see what Oliver's Woods looks like first, and let's listen as the camera pans. Okay, and then as the camera's panning uh, through this wonderful area here, a couple of questions might come to mind. What happened to this land? What is it now, today? Is this the original landscape? Is this how this originally looked? Or has this been dramatically modified? Those are the kind of questions. And if you listen real closely in the background, as we walk through Oliver's Woods, we're just going to do a real short walk, be speculating as to what this has turned into. So as we walk along, let's see how natural this landscape really and truly is. Let's go this way, and let's see what's going on here. Well, there's a, there's a saw cut right there on that particular uh, log, if you will, or piece of wood. Mm -hmm. Huh, that doesn't look that natural to me. So obviously this place has had some human interaction to it. Let's move on. Huh. I 
go over here and I see these markers and I see blue and I see some sort of a faded, if you will, oh, I don't know, red, bright red, which is faded. And I'm asking myself, hmm, that's, that's quite a bit of modification. Why? Because if you look either way here, you'll see that there are established trails. You can pick up a fence line over in this direction and obviously a huge truck just went by. So this is Oliver's Woods. What was it before Oliver's Woods? Was it always Oliver's Woods? Was it utilized in another way, shape, or form? And so those are the kind of questions we're going to grapple with. So why would there be trails? And of course, I'm going to get this here a little bit. And shame on them. Why would there be trash? In fact, going on with speculation, I'll tell you a little bit more. The reality of the situation is, is this is an area that is used by our bio biological survey and our classes in biology. And, and the students come out here and they actually do research and they actually view uh, this particular area in its so-called, catch the word, un untouched state. So any environment changes over time. Any environment you can speculate on what it used to be, what it is now, and what it might become. It's not a pristine landscape. Have your students, you know, maybe take a picture and have your students speculate on places like this. Have your students find clues as far as trails or fences or anything like that. And it could be any landscape. It doesn't necessarily have to be Oliver's Woods. Hey, let's go see what it might become. Good exercise for your students. Great for C3 toolbox applications. Come on, let's go. Okay, so in fact, who would have thought that sign, registered natural area, no access without permission. Hmm, makes you wonder about landscapes and modifications and who modifies and who is supposed to modify and who's supposed to be there or not. All right, let's, let's go on. Let's, let's see what has evolved from this particular Oliver's Woods. All right. So, as I get murdered here, so what kind of modifications are being made or have been made to this landscape, which by the way, uh, goes for a couple of miles. So this is an area of town that may or may not be very well traveled upon. Oh gosh, I don't see too much traffic. Let's go over here. And this is an area that is used Oliver's Woods has been, oh, has been transformed into a waste disposal site, as you can see. That's what this is, a waste disposal facility for our community. Okay, here are the sounds of progress in the background. Well, here we go. This is Oliver's Woods in the past, across the street, as you can see. And this is Oliver's Woods today. Modifications galore, Rudy's Barbecue, and of course, behind me, Oliver's Woods. Okay, as you've just seen, landscape modification at its best. Okay, our physical stage was quite modified, wasn't it? Our physical stage basically was changed. And so what geography does is studies the relationship between physical place and those human modifications, okay, that have occurred basically over time. So what happened to Oliver's Woods? Well, most of it is still there, but on the other side of the road, whoops, there is a barbecue place and in our neck of the woods, uh, this is a chain and this is a Rudy's, I'm putting a plug in for Rudy's that sell brisket and sausage and all that kind of stuff. And that, that's what happened to part of Oliver's Woods over time. It was changed. The built environment occurred, if you will. 
So in this series, I'm hoping that, uh, you know, this is a generational thing. I pulled up a couple of my favorite detective shows. But anyway, I, I hope that in this series that we all become more acutely aware of our surroundings. Sort of like a G, I'm going to call it geo detective. You know, maybe you'll be looking at places and landscapes just a little bit differently. So when you see something like this, you go, oh, that's just a guy in the park playing a piano. But then you might take it a step further. Well, what plaza or what park and why? Okay. Uh, oh, look at the clothes they're wearing. What season is this? Maybe another why. You know, how is this public space used? You know, that why factor. Maybe you might look at something like this and you say, well, hey, listen, I just came back from, uh, you know, Bonneville Dam, if you will, or I just came back from a particular, if you will, vacation and we, we saw this. So maybe you want, might want to look at this a little bit differently. Maybe your landscape ideas might change, okay? Actually, if you look very, very close at this one, you can see that there is a really big difference as far as the rock coloration from the water and then it gets very very light and then darker if you look very very close at that picture don't know if you can get up that close and personal but what's happening is the water level is dropping why human modification we're sucking up all that water behind that dam so all right we, we we've got it <laughs> Places get modified, right? But that's the key to understanding any place. That's a, that's a big, big, big key. And we're always going to be asking, and have your students do this, you know, with any assignment as far as dealing with any spatial or any geographical kind of concept. Hey, why is it there? Or why is where it is? Okay. Basically, why is that there? So I'm going to use a lot of my hometown or near my hometown and state examples. Do the same in your classroom. Use examples from your local community or your local area. Your students are going to plug in very, very quickly. This is Oklahoma City when it first started. Uh, this was a, the land run of 1889. That's a city. That's a tent city. That's what it started like. Whoops, it's been modified. Why is where it is? It was there basically uh, because of rail connections, because of resources, and because of, if you will, land that was settled with the shot of a gun, if you will, as far as land run is concerned. And people were really clamoring to start a place that had good connections with other places, if you will. Well, what is here now? How has this place been changed? Well, okay, that was Oklahoma City in 1889, in that era. Oh, here's Oklahoma City today in 2017. I'd say that's a big change from the, those tents. And you're asking yourself again, how has it been changed? It's been changed dramatically. It is still a crossroads. It still has a river nearby, okay? Uh, but now it is a dramatically changed, if you will, landscape. And then wh what, what makes it important? What's his signature? I'm looking at this picture and I'm saying, whoa, that's a pretty big tower there. Okay, well that's Devon Energy Tower and so we are a state that deals in petroleum and we are a state that has that resource, abundant resource, if you will. And so this is an oil company tower. So what's the signature of Oklahoma City? Maybe some people say, well, it's an oil town. Okay, maybe that's, that's its signature. That's its essence. That's why it's important. A lot of people, you know, you start Googling Oklahoma City, say, whoa, wait a minute. No, no, no. The main focus of Oklahoma City, to me, I'm a sports fan, is the Thunder, you know, our basketball team. Somebody else might look at Oklahoma City and say, well, wait a minute, I just had a trip there, and I had a lot of fun because I never realized that they have a canal area called Bricktown. Maybe that's the focus. So every single place has a different focus. Every single place has something that what I would call would be its signature or its importance or, or its essence. And there, there are multiple signatures, by the way, for places. So now you're really starting to think geographically. Now you're really starting to think about the places that you think about, you visit, or you interact with, okay? So why of where? 
you know, it reflects on everything, the political, the economic, the historic, and cultural changes that happen to places, all right? Another example, this is a place long time ago, again, during probably the, uh, this one ba basically are the late 1800s, early 1900s, and this is a community. Why is it there? The only sometimes to fi reason to figure out why a place is there is you got to keep looking at pictures of that place. And so maybe have your students archive old photos or research and then, boy, I found this one. That's why it's there. Okay, it's an oil town. It's a place in Oklahoma that was, you know, created around the oil in industry. Well, then I said, well, well, listen, how does this place look now? Well, there's how that place looks now. It's still surviving quite well. The economy still focuses around oil, but it's a little bit more diversified now. And by the way, the building in the bottom right picture, all right, is the exact same building in the bottom left picture if you look very, very closely. So sometimes things change or are modified, but they're still there. They're still there, okay? So any landscape or place has various reads, various looks to it, or various points of interest. How about thinking about where you live? Okay, you're, you're sitting maybe in a particular room, you are in a particular community, or a particular city, or a particular place. Think about that place right now. Okay? So what was the original physical or natural look? Or what is the physical or natural landscape now? Think about that. What does it look like? Does your place have a functional focus to it? To it? Does it have various functions that it does in order to make the, your place or your city survive? What activities do you have that makes it survive, if you will? What's its function? Okay. Does your place have economic importance? I'm almost positive it does. So how do you connect economically to other places? Sure, it has historic significance. I, I'm almost sure that you have, you know, iconography or museums or places that you think are historically important. And of course, your place might be associated with issues. Aren't all places <laughs> associated with various issues? And then, of course, Everything has that what I call human and cultural relevance, okay? And this is any landscape. This is any place, if you will. So just taking random shots, if you will. Uh, these are all places that I've traveled. And, of course, you're going to see the upper right-hand picture. You say, wait a minute, did you travel there? I, yeah, I did, but th that's a painting. But you can take any picture, any painting, any photo, or anything and say, hey, is it more physical features involved here? Could be the beach scene. Is it more functional as far as maybe government or maybe dysfunctional? I don't know. Does it have connections? Is it ec does it have an economic focus? Uh, is it historic? Does it have issues related to it? How cultural is it? So have your students do this. Take, take photos, take paintings, take anything, and get them started thinking along those lines. And you won't be sorry for it. Every day we are part of spaces and places, large and small, through various what? Through our actions, through our modifications, how we observe things, how we read things, you know, how we discuss things, and all those memorable experiences that we have, past and present. Oh, look at that, okay? Geography is around us because that's what geography is all about, okay? So let's wrap up some of these ideas with vignette. Okay, number one, all right? First of all, landscape and places are very, very unique. So is yours, so is anybody else's, okay? Our stage has physical and human traits, okay? I like to think that geography is a stage and you put people on it and all those interactions help things change, if you will. As a matter of fact, uh, somebody in the audience here, there is, remember, another person in the room says, okay, how do you do that? So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you my simple elevator speech. If somebody, if you are teaching geography and somebody wants you to know what the heck is geography, so here we go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to demonstrate it for you right now. I always take my fist and I go like this. Hey, this is us. This is the stage that we've been born on. This is the land, the hydrology, uh, you know, the flora, the fauna, all those wonderful things. That's, that's the stage that we've inherited. Then you take people and you put those people on top of that stage. And those people make it better or for worse, remember? 
and all of those interrelationships between the people and the land, that's what really creates geography. That's what it's all about. So our stage has physical and human traits, okay? All places change, remember? Geographers, we're always asking, why is it here? Why is it where it is? You know, those kind of questions. And of course, all places have focus. Remember the physical, economic, historic, issue related, cultural, you name it. So what ideas from this first vignette can you take back to your classroom? What can you do? And of course, I've got a little assignment for you. You will either be downloaded or you're getting right now a hard copy, if you will, packet. And of course, your packet looks similar to this. So you can download it, or if you're in a room um, that you are having a, another person passing these out to you, well, here they are. This is what I call the landscape packet. And what I'd love for you to do on our next visit is do something with this packet, okay? So here we go, what to do. So in your mind, pick a place, not necessarily the place that we just discussed, your place, but maybe pick a place that you know of, a different place. Maybe a place that you've been to. All right, you've got that in your mind, right? I hope you do. Don't you dare change. You've already picked a place, all right? And so maybe that place is some place that uh, is historic or you travel to. Maybe it is some place that you've done some mission work. I don't know, maybe it's a place that, uh, that you really have seen in movies or things of that nature. Maybe it's a place where you took a vacation, you relaxed, you did a little backstroke, or you walked down the beach. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe it's a place that was a vacation spot, uh, a very unique place to you. Maybe it's just a, a friend's house you visited in a particular neighborhood that has particular style houses. I don't know. Maybe it was that landscape, all kinds of trees, and maybe you were camping, or maybe something like that. But think about those details of that place. Think about them very, very seriously now. And what I'd like you to do is remember that place and fill out that page in your packet. Pretend you are actually there. I mean, put yourself, imagine yourself, boom, right back in that place. And pay attention, remember, remember, pay attention to detail. Reflect about the physical, okay, and the human char characteristics of that place. Reflect about all that. And we're going to be using that in other packet pages really soon. So, see you soon.